If you think Neolithic people spent their days hunting and gathering, think again. These Spanish ancestors were out building impossible structures for their time, like the Menga Dolmen. This magnificent stone structure is located in Antequera, a city often called the heart of Andalusia in southern Spain. Andalusia is where a Neolithic heritage meets with ancient Roman and Moorish roots, giving us a unique landscape and architecture. The Menga Dolmen is a 5,700-year-old monument, which means it was built when there was very little engineering technology available. It is one out of three megalithic structures located in Antequera. The other famous neighboring megalithic sites are the Dolmen del Romorel and the Dolmen de Viera. But the Mangan Dolmen is one of the most interesting ones since it was the first to be built, dating all the way back to approximately 3,800 BCE. Overall, it's 90 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 11 feet high. For years, researchers studied the building's structure, and this is what they found. Let's get one thing clear. Megaliths are structures made of large stones, and they're found all over the world. Most of them were built in late prehistoric Europe, and in this continent, there are over 35,000 megalithic structures. It derives from the ancient Greek words mega, which means great, and lithos, which means stone. The Manga Dolmen was only unearthed around the 1840s, but as soon as it was discovered, it was recognized as a masterpiece for its originality. Let's understand why. The fact that Manga has existed for nearly 6,000 years proves that its builders knew what they were doing. For starters, the mysterious builders of the Manga Dolmen transported its massive stones from the Cerro de la Cruz quarries about a half a mile away from where the dolmen stands. The thing is, the site has 32 absurdly massive stones. Its largest stone is nearly five times heavier than Stonehenge's largest stone. Together, they weigh about 1,140 tons, which is about the same as two jumbo transatlantic airplanes filled with luggage and passengers. The largest single stone in Manga, known as Capstone C5, weighs around 150 metric tons which is about the same as a blue whale. Basically, these ancestral workers carried the largest stone ever moved as part of the megalithic phenomenon in Iberia, and the second largest one in France. In case you're wondering, the first place goes to a humongous monolith weighing 330 tons. That was used to build the Great Broken Menher in southern Brittany, France. How did they do it though? The first challenge was to carefully select the rocks that would be used to build the structure. According to experts, the builder chose calcerenites and calcerudites, which are considered soft or moderately soft rocks, probably because they would settle into each other more easily with time. Then they had to move these huge monsters. The most plausible guess is that they built a trackway to carry them using scaffolds, ropes, and gravity itself. This way, they would minimize friction. To carry them downhill, the workers needed to have precise control of their acceleration and a precise notion of the balance point of each rock. Remember we said they used soft rocks, though? This meant they needed to be extremely careful when maneuvering them with ropes. Scientists' main guess is that they also had to build sledges on which to place the rocks. But moving the rocks wasn't their main accomplishment. You see, they designed a structure that would still be standing after centuries. And this is mainly due to the fact that Menga's builders used sophisticated techniques to protect the structure from erosion. In case you don't know, a dolmen is a type of single-chambered megalithic temple or final resting place. Most of them consist of two or more upright monoliths that support a large, flat, horizontal capstone or table. Most dolmens date from the late Neolithic period, and they can be found all over the world in places such as Turkey, England, Indonesia, Spain, Brazil, and the list goes on. In the Manga Dolmen, 
Researchers say they took extra care to waterproof the whole thing. The upright stones that make up the walls weren't placed straight up, but were actually tilted inward at around an 84 or 85 degree angle, making the whole chamber narrower at the top than the bottom, giving it a trapezoid shape. These stones also leaned sideways against each other, and this wasn't a random choice. The builders probably used some pretty advanced tools like levels and squares to make sure the angles were super precise. One researcher even said it was like building a giant Tetris puzzle where the builder had very little room to make mistakes, since the rocks were so absurdly heavy to move for adjustments. In order for the rocks to be tilted ever so slightly, the builder had to design deep foundation sockets on which to place the rocks. These sockets allowed them to have control of the millimetric positioning of the rocks, so that they would really interlock with one another. The cherry on top was literally the capstones. Once the massive capstones were added on top, the whole thing became a solid box. They carved out the inside from the bedrock beneath it, leaving the walls and roof intact. To protect the chamber, they piled a huge mound of soil over the top, kind of like wrapping the structure in a blanket. This kept the chamber warm and dry and also added extra stability, almost like a natural straitjacket to hold everything together. Oh, and there's another very important detail. The builders aligned the dolmen with the nearby mountains, not only for practical reasons, but also to create intriguing light patterns within the chamber. This alignment proves how much planning went into the construction of the megalith, pointing to the builders' deep connection with astronomy as well. An avid researcher of the site said it's not exactly clear the reason why dolmens were built. Not many relics have been found on site, but many agree that it was probably used as a temple and resting places for important people. That's why they were built to last eternally. The Manga Dolmen specifically was built in a seismically active region, so that was another reason for the sturdy structure. It seems that the builders were also thinking of other details as well. From the entrance of the dolmen, one looks directly to the so-called Lover's Rock and the sunrise both at the same time. The Lover's Rock is an important part of local folklore and is a part of the circuit of dolmens from Antikera, even though it's not a megalithic structure. The Lover's Rock supposedly got that name after an enamored couple threw themselves from the top of the mountain since they were forbidden to be together in this lifetime. A classic Romeo and Juliet true life story, if you will. The Menga Dolmen is also astronomically aligned, like most dolmens around the world are. During the summer solstice, there is a specific part of the day when the sun enters the dome, illuminates the right side and leaves the left side completely in the shadows. They had to think of the dolmen's exact precision so that that would happen, you know. And speaking of folklore, while some cultures say that these impressive dolmens were built by a little gray people from other planets, Iberian culture has another guess. In local legends, some speak of the so-called enchanted muras, which were fairy-like creatures. These beings were known to be earth elementals, extremely beautiful, seductive, and powerful in their own right. One of their main gists was building dolmens, where they would hide and practice their own ceremonies. There is a lot of reference to these beings in local lore, so hey, it's worth the mention. Either way, it's no wonder UNESCO decided to name it one of its national heritage sites. It's a true ancient masterpiece. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.